I really don't understand why this problem is categorized under medium difficulty. Or rather, I can tell you guys a sweet little trick that can make this problem super super simple. So let's find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start off with the most obvious way to approach this problem and then look upon the fact why it may be under a medium difficulty. After that, we will find a very efficient solution by a neat little trick and then, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. Actually, it is pretty straightforward. You are given a linked list and a value of n. And you have to remove the nth node but from the end of the list. So what does that mean? For example, in our first test case, I have my list like this, correct? And the value of n is 2. So you have to remove the second node from the end of the list. That means this is the first node, this is the second node. So you have to remove this node. When this node gets removed, my new list will look something like this, right? So this is what you have to return. Similarly, in our second test case, I have a list that only has two elements and the value of n is 1. What does that mean? Look at the nth node from the very end. So this is the last node and that is what you have to remove. Once you remove it, your list looks something like this, correct? And this does not stop. For example, in my third test case, I have a list that only has one element and the value of n is also 1. So if you start to look from the back, this is the value 1, right? That is the node you have to remove. So as soon as you remove it, what do you get? You aren't left with anything, right? So you just have to return a null. You can be quite sure that the value of n is within limits. That means that if my list only has two elements, you will never get a value of n that is greater than two. And all of these limits are mentioned in the problem statement itself. So if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better now, feel free to stop the video over here and try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. I have the sample test case with me, right? I have a list where head points at four and I have five elements in my list, correct? I also have a value of n. Usually in problems involving linked lists, you are asked that, okay, remove the fifth node from the beginning, remove the seventh node from the beginning. So in every question you are asked that, okay, remove from the beginning because in a linked list, you do not know where does it end. You are just given a head pointer, right? So your linked lists could be very long. And then how do you determine, hey, what is the second node from the very end? So the most obvious way to approach this problem will be that, okay, you make one traversal just to parse the entire list and find out its length. So you will start from the head and keep on going until the very end until you get a null. So that will give you a count, right? For this particular example, you are going to find out that, okay, this list has five elements and you are being asked to remove the second node from the very end. That means 5 minus 2 and that gives you a 3. So technically what you will do is you will make three jumps and then you will land at the node that you have to remove. So then you can easily remove this node and you can return your answer, right? So this method is correct and it gives you a correct answer every time. But I guess this problem goes in the medium difficulty because they want you to solve this problem just doing one iteration of the entire linked list. That means you're not allowed that, okay, first you travel the linked list and find its length and then again start from the beginning and then determine that, okay, I have to remove this node. So this is the only thing I can imagine why this problem is categorized under medium difficulty. So now you try to think that, okay, I can solve the problem using two iterations. How can I just switch to one iteration? Let us take up a more generic example and then try to come up with a solution. This time you have a bigger list and the value of n is 3, correct? So if you just look at the list, you know that you have to remove the third node from the very end, right? That means you have to get rid of the node that has the value 42. But you only have to do it in one iteration. When you have to traverse a list, what do you usually do? You take up a pointer that starts from the head and then go all the way up to null, right? This time, what we're going to do is 
वी आर गोना टेक टू पॉइंटर्स एंड राइट नाउ बोथ ऑफ देम स्टार्ट एट हेड करेक्ट नाउ देर इज वेरी टाइनी नंबर थ्योरी इन्वॉल्व ट्राई टू थिंक वॉट विल हैपन इफ आई मूव वन पॉइंटर एन स्पेस इज अड सो I will take one of my pointer and move one, two, and three. What did I just do? I maintained a gap of n spaces between these two pointers, right? And try to think, what will happen now if I try to move both these pointers in the forward direction? Let us just do that. So these pointers will keep on moving ahead like this, correct? And where do you stop? You stop as soon as the next of second pointer is null so you have identified that okay the next of this pointer is null so that is where you stop now just watch what happened look at this pointer now the next of this pointer is the node that you have to remove right so literally things become so simple you just take two pointers move the first pointer n spaces ahead and now move both the pointers ahead until the next of second pointer is null after that the next of first pointer is the node that you have to remove and removing a node is super super simple you know that linked list works on pointers right so all you have to do is just say that the next of this particular node it should point at the next of the next node and that is all you have to do just return the head now what will happen if someone tries to traverse the list from 4 they go to 8 then 15 then 16 then 23 then 7 and then 5 and then null so what did we just do we got rid of the node 42 and this was the third node from the very end of the linked list right so this makes things so so simple correct the only other doubt that you guys can have is that okay what about all the edge cases what happens if the linked list is very small or it just has one element won't it get out of bounds or won't you need any such special handling so that is where i always take the help of a dummy node and i always advise that when you are encountering problems with linked lists always take the help of a dummy node because a dummy node is something that you can easily discard at the very end when you're done with it so let me tell you what i mean by these two examples For example, I have this particular test case, right? My list is very small, and the value of n is one. So the idea of a dummy node is just create a dummy node, and it can have any value. Just assign the next of dummy node to your head. What this does is, when you're done with all of the iterations, just return dummy dot next. That way, you will always preserve your head value. And as soon as you do dummy dot next, this dummy no longer exists. you are just left with your head so once again let us try to follow the same approach you have two pointers right the value of n is 1 that means i will take one of my pointer and advance it one space ahead correct now if you remember what did we do now you have to move both the pointers until the next of second pointer points at null so i move both of my pointers and now the next of the second pointer is pointing at null so that is where you stop and which node do you have to remove you have to remove the node next to your first pointer your first pointer is over here and you have to get rid of this node so it is really simple right just remove this pointer and then you can simply update it after you are done just return a dummy dot next and then you will be returned with this list if you notice you start from the head and then you go to null so you only have one node remaining so you see how the dummy node made things so much simple correct let us look at the second test case now this only has one node and it is a very borderline case so once again we will do the same thing first of all create a dummy node and assign the next of dummy node to head after that to follow the algorithm what do you do you take two pointers and assign both the pointers at the very first node of your list correct now you have to advance the second pointer n spaces ahead so it got one space ahead after that you have to move both the pointers until the next of second pointer points at null it is already pointing at null so you don't have to do anything and which node do you remove you remove the node next to your first node 
So you know that you have to remove this node. And once again, it is very, very simple. Just remove this reference and point the next of dummy node to the next of next node. And then what do you do? You return dummy dot next. So dummy dot next is null and you just return a null. So that is simply your answer. So once again, our dummy node was really helpful and it will help you to avoid all of those errors, all of those index out of bound exceptions, and it will free off your mind with handling all of these special test cases. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample list where I have a head value and I have the value of n that are passed in as an input parameter to the function remove nth from end. Now to begin the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a dummy node. So I have this dummy node and I do dummy dot next equals to head. So this is going to help me out. When I'm done with everything, I will just return dummy dot next and then I will have my remaining list. For the next step, you assign two pointers to the very beginning of your list, right? So that is what I do over here. I take up two pointers and I assign it to the very first node, correct? That is what I do. If you remember our algorithm, you have to take the second pointer and then move two spaces ahead, that is n spaces. So when it moves two spaces, this next pointer will be pointing at this particular location. So right now, my list looks something like this, correct? That is exactly what we do, right? Move the second pointer n spaces ahead. And after this, what do you do? You have to move both of these pointers until the second pointers next is null. In our next while loop, that is what we are doing over here, right? Until the next of second pointer is null, keep advancing both of these pointers. So this pointer will go on and it will reach over here and this pointer will keep on continuing and it will reach over here, right? Now, which node do you have to remove? You have to remove the next node to your first pointer. That is node number 16. And if you check once again, this is the second node from the end. How do you remove it? It is very simple. Just watch this line very closely. I am saying first pointer dot next. That means the next of this pointer. Where should it point to? It should point to first ptr dot next dot next. So first ptrs dot next is this right now and its next is 23, correct? So I am reassigning this variable. Where does it point now? First ptr dot next is first ptr dot next dot next. I have now altered my list. And to return the answer, what do I do? I return dummy dot next. So dummy is over here and the next of dummy is pointing at head. So when this list gets returned, how do you traverse it? You start with four, then you get eight, then 15, then 23, and then a null. So one of the nodes got removed. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you will be traversing the entire list at least once. And the space complexity of the solution is order of one because you do not need any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope this trick simplifies the problem a lot for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say something out of experience. You might have solved a lot of lead code problems, right? And it is not necessary that if a problem is categorized under medium difficulty, then you have to think of a complex solution. It can be very, very simple. Just try to look at the basics and at least try to form a solution rather than discarding altogether. So this might be the only tip that I may have for this particular problem because it is more about how quickly you are able to visualize it. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problems which look tricky at first but are really simple to solve? Tell me everything in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone else also who is watching the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going. As an update, I am soon launching my playlist on Grass, which has been requested a lot. So until then, stay tuned.